Welcome to PTV News. I'm William Brunner. And I'm Nicole Bradica. LIU Post has become a safe space for students of the LGBT community. Here's Michelle Morey with more on the campus efforts. According to the Human Rights Campaign, 4 in 10 LGBT youth feel unaccepted in their communities. LIU Post is trying to take measures to help the LGBTQ students on campus feel safe. It's pretty much providing a safe environment for um, like uh, LGBTQ, <laughs> actually the symptom is quite long, like there's a lot of letters, um, you know, after that, but I don't really know all the letters. It's kind of for the, uh, you know, uh, students in that population, kind of provide support and um, kind of like put it by putting up stickers and um, like uh, in your emails, the signatures, kind of providing to them if you, they ever needed someone to tell, talk to in regarding to situation in that nature, we are here for them. I'm pretty sure 2013 that we attended a training all together. It was organized by um, the counseling center back then, which is now called the uh, Culture for uh, no, the Center for Healthy Living. And with, as long as with um, few other um, RHDs at that time, um, it was a training based on getting the administrators in our post educated about the population, what are the things they are looking for, and kind of you know, getting us comfortable in terms of, okay, if a student ever approaching a situation like that, where the support that you can give to them and what are the available resources that is available on campus. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, you know, that way. Have you ever heard of the program Safe Outpost? No. no. I've heard some things about it, yeah. I'll say Pit Post is really for this particular population. As long as we are not trying to you know, you never know when, when you try to promote it and things, you don't know how that is going to be portrayed by others. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of, it's instead of like promoting to letting everyone know this is happening here, right. we are more looking towards the perspective, or at least my personally, I'm more looking towards the perspective of I am available here. A lot of students, if you try not to sound discriminated, mm -hmm. but um, if you are not in that population, probably you wouldn't recognize it. Mm -hmm. But if you are in that population, I think that rainbow uh, triangle itself would be really, like, it speaks for itself. I think it's great that they're really trying to create a safe space and make everyone feel welcome when they come here. Yeah, definitely. WLIW, a sector of PBS television, came to LIU Post to film an interview in the Hillwood Steinberg Museum. Students of the Visual and Performing Arts School were able to set up and produce the interview. Here's Ashley Iovino with more on the shoot. Broadcasting students at LIU Post were given the opportunity to work alongside WLIW in the production of their weekly series, Arts Beat. For many of the students, this was the first time their work was aired on television. I was given the chance to speak with some of the students involved, and here's what they had to say. It was a great experience, and it was nice to be part of a real professional production. I actually enjoyed it a lot because I'm so used to doing class projects and that's not real. It's just, you know, for a class, for a professor. But this was actually going to be on TV and I was excited about it. The piece featured Bernice Abbott's Changing New York portfolio. While shooting, students were able to interview Barbara Applegate, the museum's curator. We really believe that it's important to develop a, another generation of art viewers, that they may learn something about history, they may learn something about painting technique, but what they're really doing is developing a sense of comfort about art viewing, how to be and inhabit an art viewing space, and how to ask questions that are sophisticated about art making. To see the final product, tune in on Thursday, April 23rd at 7.30 p.m. or go to WLIW.org slash programs. For PTV News, I'm Ashley Iovino. You know, I really think this is a great opportunity for students. There's a lot of things that you're not going to learn in campus, and bringing in organizations is just an amazing thing and an asset that students will have when they go to truly get a job. Exactly. The 4,500 square foot area of the Hillwood Art Museum has been filled with modern art pieces created by graduate students here at LIU Post. Here's Casey Connors who can paint a better picture of the gallery's new look. The Steinberg Museum of Art just opened a new exhibit on Monday. This new exhibit is called the Masters of Fine Art Exhibition. Our current exhibition is the Masters of Fine Arts candidates from the School of Visual and Performing Arts Art Department. There are eight graduating students this semester. The MFA program here at Post is a two-year program, and artists work in a variety of media, including painting, photography, uh, mixed media, digital design, and um, other new media as well. 
When we think about contemporary art that's cutting edge, this is an excellent example of cutting edge contemporary art. These artists are working on this work sometimes two hours before it arrives in the gallery space. So the work is very reflective of the immediate moment. Whereas other exhibitions that are curated, oftentimes you plan an exhibition a year in advance. So the work has been done for at least a year before it comes into the gallery space. Sometimes the work's been done for 150 years before it comes into the gallery space. Whatever they've made most recently that reflects their time here at Post is what gets included in the exhibition. The piece behind me is actually called Sky Ocean and actually depicts the transition from sky to ocean using fabric. It is great when it can communicate without somebody talking about it. Asking somebody which their favorite artwork is is like asking which their favorite <laughs> child is. Um, in an exhibition like this, you know, there's a wide variety of work in the exhibition. In this case, the exhibition is hung and installed so elegantly and every work is really fully articulated and reflects a significant amount of work on the part of the artist. This exhibit opened last Monday and will be available until commencement. I'm Casey Connors, PTV News. International Culture Week brought out some great treats from around the globe this past week. Find out more when we get back. Continuing with the celebration of International Culture Week, LIU Post students served up a variety of homegrown favorites from across the world. Here's Carla Armstrong with the scoop. As part of International Culture Week, a few clubs on campus served exotic food from around the world in Hillwood today. We're currently serving samosa, which is a fried Indian snack, which is filled with mashed potatoes with Indian herbs, with on the side with sauce. Here, it's um, Italian food. It's a meat pie and here it's from Haiti and then we also had sesame chicken um, cookies from Jordan. Yeah the purpose of International Culture Week is always trying to promote different cultures uh, uh, from the world because we know we have uh, like around 42 countries of students uh, here so we really want to make uh, American students uh, like a familiar with the culture and also try to know something or open to the different cultures. So I think food is always uh, a very attractive uh, like uh, themes and uh, everyone may uh, be easier to start to try food first. This year ISU, uh, they, they organize the whole thing by themselves and I think this should be the third year we have this uh, traditional events. It was a lot of work, a lot of preparation, and especially to make sure that everyone would either participate or um, have like their own contribution, but it was it was really worth it. And people devoured the samosas. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people definitely came in, and we even got a couple of more new club members, so that definitely helped our club out a lot. International food is great. I just love Italian food and I love even better Indian food. For PTV News, I'm Kellen Altrude. Did you get to taste any other food yet? You know, I went down there, I saw some stuff, I took most of it. It was really good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> 
Due to recent complaints from the student body of LIU Post, the Winnick Dining Hall has made some new changes and additions to their daily menu. Here's Stephanie Rule with the dish. Winnick Dining Hall, the residential dining hall for LIU Post students. Recently, there's been a change to Winnick's menu, and Aramark employees feel that they've been stepping up their food for LIU Post students. I was able to get an exclusive interview with Brian Yoli, the food service director at LIU Post. He told me about the recent upgrades at Winnick. Change our chicken out, all types of chickens, breast meat, chicken, bit of quality meat. Uh, we change our cereals out mm -hmm. based off our feedback from our um, chef tables to all general meals products. Mm -hmm. Now we have a real tiny tiger. Cool. Uh, we did a, a, a blowout chicken nugget ball. Um, I feel like Winnick has stepped up the game a lot, and the food is a lot more nutritious, and it's delicious. I don't feel like anything's changed. Does the food still suck? Yes, the food is terrible. I barely eat here. I don't know. I'm not really too fond of Winnick. I like COVID better. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's not much choice. Do you, do you feel that um, anything has changed in Winnick recently? Um, not really. No. Come check out the new upgrades at Winnick. They're open from 7 to 9, Sunday through Saturday. Nicole, do you dorm on campus? I do. So how, are you excited about the changes that are going to be coming to Winnick? I'm definitely excited. Um, I hope the food is better than normal here. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's <laughs> one thing to hope for. <laughs> To kick off Greek Week here at LIU Post, the sororities and fraternities gathered in front of Hillwood Commons to repaint each rock that symbolizes the organizations. Greek Week entails multiple events on campus that benefit charities and promotes Greek unity. Relay for Life will be hosting its second annual event since its inception at the LIU Post campus, joining other universities and those affected by cancer. Find out more when we return. Did you know when you drive in traffic, pollutants cause the air that you breathe to be 10 times more polluted? Living in metro areas can reduce your life expectancy by two to three years. This can cause your lungs to become more damaged. Reduce driving by carpooling, public transportation, motor scooters, or bicycles. For more information on how you can reduce pollution, visit epa.gov. LIU Post prepares to try and reach their goal of $25,000 for the American Cancer Association event, Relay for Life. As the campus gears up for the 12-hour walk, Petula and Nagasakos fills us in on the marathon walk. LU Post is gearing up for their annual Relay for Life event, which will help raise money for the American Cancer Society. There's going to be, it's, a, it's on April 17th, 5, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. We're going to have activities such as tug of war, we have a DJ, we have musical chairs, we're having relay competitions, so um, different competitions around the track. Um, to get different target audiences. We have like a survivor speech, um, a caregiver speech, so there's different activities that students can participate throughout the whole night. Uh, it's a great way to like unify the campus, I think, and it's also, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it raises money for a great organization that helps uh, fight cancer and help people be around a little longer. I was a Relay for Life team captain, actually, at my local event um, in my community. Um, and then when I went away to college, I ended up chairing my event and then now I am working for Relay for Life. It's highly encouraged that students can bring outsiders. We actually encourage anyone who knows a survivor or a caregiver to attend um, because we recognize survivors in a survivor lunch right before Relay for Life. Well, I'm actually not doing Relay for Life for anyone in particular this year. It's just uh, just to show support to all the families that are out there. I've had uh, uh, family friends who are actually like you know going through like tough times with cancer and everything, and unfortunately they're not with us anymore. But you know. Just knowing that there's like a program like this, being able to show the support to all the families and everyone that's out there trying to fight for like, you know, the cause and everything like that is definitely something that, you know, it's just very like heartwarming and just showing support to all the families is definitely like an amazing and like good experience. So students can register at the Relay for Life site. It's on, uh, if you just really Google Relay for Life uh, LIU post, she'll come up straight with the site. The e easiest way for students to get involved in the organization would be for them to join our planning committee. So um, Relay for Life is student-run, um, volunteer-driven. So mm -hmm. all of the events that are taking place that night, all of the events that take place beforehand, anything like that is all done by the students, those volunteers. Um, so anyone is able to join our planning committee. We mm -hmm. accept anyone and everyone. Uh, we have committee meetings every Wednesday at 1230. Uh, humanities, I think it's 122. Uh, you can also talk to Ariana Laviri upstairs in 217. So make sure you head down to the Pratt Center next week on April 17th to help raise money for a great cause. Are you participating in the Relay for Life? 
I can't unfortunately be there. I have something going on, but I am donating. I donate a little bit, but I want to definitely give them some more. It's a great cause, and I really hope they reach their goal this year. Good. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Get ready for a night to remember as the Tiller Center prepares for an evening of tango music. Taking a step in the right direction, here's Michelle Morey with more. The Tilla Center of LIU Post is known for holding many different productions such as shows, concerts, and recitals for both on-campus productions and off-campus productions. The newest event at LIU Post Tilla Center is none other than Tango Night. Tango Night is part of the Tilla Center's uh, new music series which I curate and uh, there have been tango uh, concerts in terms of dance in terms of other areas on campus for a number of years and there seems to be an interest on the part of students and faculty in the audience um, regarding tango uh, but this particular concert has never been done before and it brings together uh, two extraordinary musicians uh, the pianist is a is a twice winning Grammy uh, composer and performer. The violinist uh, is the uh, first woman concertmaster of the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. Oh, wow. um, and together they put together a wonderful combination uh, for the program on Friday night, uh, which really takes the audience through the history of the tango, uh, beginning with uh, the kind of folk dancers, dances that it began with, and then up through um, the Piazzolla um, compositions, which made tango very famous. And it concludes with uh, some of uh, some original compositions by the pianist. Hmm. So it, it's an extraordinary opportunity for our audience, uh, for our students, to see two uh, internationally acclaimed performers um, who have taken this literature uh, and made it their own and uh, will present, I think, what will be a stunning concert. Tickets are available at a reduced rate for students and uh, they can get them at the Tillis box office. Friday, April 10th at 8 p.m. in Hillwood Recital Hall. For PTV News, I'm William Brunner. And I'm Nicole Bradica. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.